What is up, Dream Media family? Welcome back to another episode on the Pool Table Room Transformation. This project is moving right along. I have showed you guys from start all the way up till this point, everything from how to wire the room to unboxing every single product as well as installation. In today's video, I'm going to be showing you how to do the setup and installation of the Epson LS800. Let's go! Okay, before we actually get into the video, for everybody who's new to this series, check out the space. I have a full 7.4.6 wiring in place. Currently, I have six Dolby Atmos speakers installed. These are the Focal 300 series. I have a mixture of the ICW6 as well as the I. The A6s, which are the aimable version of that, because I do have a little pitch to the ceiling here. In the rear of the room, I have the Focal IW6s. These are all the 300 series. Um, I got the PB16 Ultras from SVS here at the rear of the room. And we're finally getting to the point where I'm going to be firing things up, so I'm getting really excited. Um, we have the Epson LS800, 4000 lumen output, 4K. E-Shift projector, the Epic Vision, um, and then this is the Epic Vision um, Ultra Short Throw ALR Ambient Light Rejecting Screen. This means that it can cancel out some of the light coming from these windows and from all the can lights above and still give us a really nice image. So if you're curious of the installation of that uh, screen there, I made a detailed walkthrough video on that as well. The Salamander Designs cabinet, which is perfect for housing all of the AV gear and keeping everything cool and operating efficiently. Okay, so that is the recap. Next, we're gonna get into the installation and setup of the LS800. So like I said, this is the Chicago finish uh, from Salamander, really beautiful cabinet. And what I like is it's all just geared towards AV, right? So like as an example, it has this perfect hole cut specific to the LS800. And say if I get a different model down the road, I can get a different top. I could also just get a flat top if I end up going to a television down the road. So it's not a piece where I feel like it's just a waste of money and specifically designed just for this unit and kind of restricting me for future use. Um, I love the fact that you could just order another top for this um, unit itself. Now, another key feature is the ventilation that's built into the cabinet. There's vents on the back, which I show in the installation video of this product, that keep everything nice and cool. Another thing is just easy to access. It's all built with these products in mind. As an example, check this out, guys. Boom. You can just pop the whole front right off, and now I can easily pop my LS800 into place. So I'm gonna go ahead and move my front cabinet over to the side, and we're gonna go ahead and start with the installation. So it is helpful if there's two people. Like the tag said, you know, from Salamander, it's recommending that two people do this installation, but I'm here doing it myself, right? And a lot of my pros out there, your other coworker may be up running a speaker wire in the back and you gotta pop it in. So I feel like I could easily install this myself. So what I'm gonna do is lift up the unit and then I'm gonna put one hand underneath and lower it into place like this. I'm gonna kind of set it off to the side a little and then I'm just gonna get my hands up underneath it and lower it right into place. Like that. Perfect. Now there are adjustable legs on the unit right here and here. And we just wanna spin those to get it to where the projector is perfectly level with the top of the cabinet. And then on the back side, there's another little wheel that you can adjust. And again, we just want to adjust it until it's perfectly level with the cabinet, giving it a nice, clean appearance, just like that. 
Now the laser on these guys is right here and it's throwing up onto the screen. There's some key specifications that you need to keep in mind when you're setting this up and you're mounting your screen, which I'm gonna go over now. All right guys, this is the quick start guide that you're gonna receive with your LS800. And as you can see, the placing the projector is one of the first, it is actually the first step. And it shows you right here the dimensions that are required for you to broadcast that image onto the screen. This is really important to keep in mind. So if you have a 100 inch, you're gonna follow these specifications. If you have a 120 inch, you're gonna follow these specifications. So from the rear of the projector, this would be the rear right here, B, um, we are going to need to be a minimum of 6.8 inches. And then to the front of the projector, A, we're gonna need to be 20.1 inches because this is a 120 inch screen. This is another key specification that I want you guys to be aware of. The distance from the top of the projector to the bottom of the projected image is 5.9 inches for 100 and 7.5 inches for a 120 inch image. So what I'm gonna do is go ahead and check those specifications and make sure everything is set up properly per the user manual. Okie dokie. So we're looking at 7.5 inches from the cabinet to the screen. And I actually did this math prior to putting the projector in place. I looked up the specifications online and I knew I was gonna do this cabinet, so I looked at the cabinet specs and then lined it all up before I actually dropped the unit in place. So a little bit of planning goes a long way. When you're consulting with my specialist, we work with these units all the time, day in and day out. That's one thing that separates us from your average competitor, guys, is we actually get our hands on this stuff and play with it. No matter if it's your $25,000 JVC NZ9 RS4100 or it's a $3,500 ultra short throw E-Shift 4K projector, we want to give you authentic information here at Dream Media. So that covers our distance from the unit to the screen. Next, we're going to be covering our specifications from the wall to the unit, or from the screen to the unit. So we needed for a 120 inch screen, 6.8 inches. So we're looking at, okay, I'm gonna give you guys a different angle so you can see. So we're checking 6.8 inches from the unit to the screen. And then from the screen to the front of the projector, we're gonna be looking for 20.2. Perfect. So now that everything is in line properly with the user manual, we're gonna go ahead and plug it in and fire it up. All right, next we're gonna take our power connection and we're gonna connect it to our projector. I'm gonna pop this side panel off just so that you guys can see a little bit better. This gives you access to all your connections on the side. I show this in detail for you guys on the unboxing video, but as you can see, our power connection is right there. I'm gonna go ahead and plug it in. Okay, now that our unit is plugged in, I got a surge protector over here, and I'm gonna be connecting it to my surge protector, like that. All right, next I'm going to slide my surge protector back into the cabinet. Search protection is really important, guys. You spend all this money on your equipment. You don't want to get hit by lightning and it get knocked out. This is a super high-end search protector, though. It's more of a power filter and actually cleans audio. It's for hi-fi systems. I have a lot more affordable options available. Ask our sales specialist about Wattbox. Uh, that's one of my best sellers, really affordable, and um, it keeps you on budget. <laughs> does the job and has a significant jewel protection. Okay, so got our power connected. Next, I am gonna go ahead and fire up the unit. Okay, let's go ahead and fire it up. Okay, so we have the unit powered on, guys. Before you go any further, the first thing that I want you to do is run firmware updates. 
when you're getting new products, especially brand new products off the line, if it's a current year model, they're always working through bugs. So run that firmware update. Next, we're gonna be going into projector settings. And I'm gonna be showing you guys how to do the alignment. So installation. And on this unit, guys, it is ridiculously easy. You can either fire it straight onto the wall or you can use an ultra short throw screen. I would highly recommend an ultra short throw screen if only for the ambient light rejecting properties. As you can see, I have massive 12 foot high, a wall of windows over here and you can still see the image. When you're broadcasting onto a wall, you're not gonna get any ambient light rejecting properties, but also you're dealing with like the texture of the wall rather than a nice smooth surface. And this is specifically designed for ultra short throw. This is the, whoops. <laughs> so what just happened guys is actually a really cool feature that I was gonna point out to you a little bit further down the road. And it's a safety feature. This is 4,000 lumen output and you do not want your little kiddo to get blinded, right? So they got a safety feature built in to where if you wave your hand over it or your kid put, wants to look into it, <laughs> It's going to turn the image off and protect you from losing your vision, which is a really a must with the projector being so accessible. Um, anyways, moving back to the screen, ambient light rejecting, ultra short throw, you got to do the screen. Not only do we have the Epson Epic Vision uh, screen, which I'm actually really impressed with, and it's at a very compelling price point, as well as it sits really close to the wall and looks like a TV. It's a good unit for the money. We also have Stewart EPV and Screen Innovation screens available, so talk with our specialists about those options as well. Okay, so we have an ultra short throw screen. We are going to be using the remote control adjustment feature because this is just super easy and you don't have to get your phone out. If you would like to use the app, um, there is an, <laughs> I just turned it off again. If you would like to use the app, there is another option available where you use your camera and it'll make quick corrections um, for the screen with a black bezel. Okay, so you can either use the app or remote control. Today, I'm gonna to be showing you guys how to use the remote control adjustment. And then it's saying you move the projector back and forth until the projected image is larger than the screen frame. I don't want you to do anything right now, guys, except for take your measurements, get everything in line with what the instruction manual says and what I just showed you. And then we're going to grab each corner. So like as an example, I'm gonna start with this right one and you select it on the remote here with the center button and then you just drag it right into place. And just kind of roughly get each corner close like that. And then you hit the back button, go over to the next corner, start dragging it closer. If you start with getting the unit in the proper location right off the bat, it's going to make this setup process a breeze because you're already going to be super close to the final calibration. We're going to grab this bottom corner and we're going to move it over. And you're just using the little arrows to tap. I'll come back here so you guys can see. So now that I've gone and I've adjusted all four corner adjustments, you can see it's lining up just perfect with the edges. And I'm going to hit it from another angle so I can make sure I'm right on. Like you can see this top corner is just a smidge off. So I'm going to go up to the top corner and then give a couple clicks to the right and a couple clicks up. I'm going to check my other corner up here. You can see that one can go just a little bit to the left. Okay, this bottom corner is looking pretty on. I'm going to go ahead and give it one tap to the left. Perfect. And then the right corner. 
This one right here needs to go a little bit to the left. Just don't want any bleed onto the wall. Okay, so now we can go ahead and finish. Now that we have all four corners adjusted perfectly, and you can see my projector is perfectly centered and level inside of the cabinet. Okay, now that we're done adjusting to the ultra short throw screen, we're gonna hit finish. And now you can see that the image is filling the entire screen. The next step is going to be our focus. So I'm gonna line this up so you guys can watch me do it. And I'm gonna show you here on the side of the unit exactly what I'm going to be adjusting. It's actually a manual focus. Inside of here, you have an adjustment right, <laughs> right here. So you slide it down or up. And I'm gonna go back in the room. I'm gonna put the camera back in the room and I'm gonna show you guys my adjustment and how I get this aligned or how I get this focused properly. All right, before I do the focus, I'm gonna drop the shades just so that I can see a little bit better. These are the SI Nano Shades, which Dream Media also sells. Oh, as you can see, I'm bleeding a little bit onto the wall. So I'm gonna go back into my settings here. Projector settings. Installation. Ultra short throw, remote control. Next. It could be that my focus is off. So I'm gonna go ahead and take that little slider that I showed you guys earlier and see if that makes any, a difference. Yes, it is. So you just move the slider up and down until your image is clear. Unfortunately, this model doesn't have a motorized zoom, but that's pretty typical for this price point. Okay, so that did fix my alignment. It helps too if you have somebody else stand back and just tell you to go like forward and backward. Um, I think I'm just barely slightly out of alignment or out of, I think I'm just barely out of focus. So I'm just gonna try to tweak it a little bit. Perfect. Okay, let's go to our picture. Adaptive light output. I'm going to turn that on so that it can adjust to the proper light output. Color mode. We have vivid, dynamic. Let me turn off these. Studio lights. That dynamic mode, vivid mode. We have cinema mode. And then we have natural. And you guys can play around with these and kind of tune it to your liking. I'm gonna leave it in vivid, which was default. For now, which you can see it comes off with a little bit more of a blue hue. When it comes to ultra short throws, the Epson LS800 absolutely kills the game. Price to performance, you really just can't beat it right now. I've seen everything that's out on the market and honestly, there is nothing better. It's super close to the wall, it's super bright and has a very clean minimalistic design and the price point. Obviously, you spend more money, you can get better, but in this price range, Epson knocked it out of the park. Now, if you guys would like to purchase 
anything home theater related, make sure to reach out and show your support. We ship throughout the entire nation and carry everything you need to build your dream home theater. So reach out today for a free FaceTime video consultation. My specialist would love the opportunity to earn your business. If you like this video, give me a big thumbs up and make sure to smash that subscribe button down below. Till next time, this is Zach with Dream Media Home Theater. Thank you for watching.